Okay, hello everybody. How are you? I am Michelle with Savvy Women of Social Media. And during our interview series today, I am interviewing Lori Enos, Marketing Communications Director and co-owner of Blue Lilac Marketing Group. And Lori is an energetic force of marketing, which she is. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. yes she Great is. People. <laughs> she is the co-owner of Blue Lilac Marketing Group, which has been operating for more than eight years. She has over 20 years marketing experience working with companies in varying fields. Her clients range from restaurants, retail shops, and a jewelry designer to financial investment firms, startup software companies, and medical practices. Lori works strategically with her clients to create powerful and elegant marketing solutions. She has deep experience in the corporate sector and gladly left it to pursue a more personal boutique style of business. She's ready to deliver value at every turn. And yes, she is. So welcome, Lori. How are you? I'm fine, Michelle. Thank you. And thank you so much for inviting me to do this. Yes, with you. Thank you for doing this. And if you guys are watching live on fake Facebook, make sure you join the Zoom like Sandra has so that you guys can participate and ask questions. Um, you can either type the questions in the chat or I'm sure there'll be time um, after to ask questions because I'm not really monitoring the Facebook group, but uh, I will do my best to do that. Let me refresh the page just in case. And I guess we will get started. So what is it about web design that people really need to know first when it comes to if they're just starting out, what is one thing that they should think about when it comes to building their own website or looking for even a web designer like yourself? Well, the first thing I would say is when you're starting out, I realize that most people, when you're starting out, you've got a limited budget. Um, you do need a website because it, it validates you. Um, that's one of the first things we all, we pick up our phone and we go looking for to see, are you, are you legitimate? Are you going to be around next week or next month or next year when I have a problem with whatever set product or service you, you're selling me? So that you do need one. Um, take a look. There's, I, I love to use the Wix platform for my own business. That's what my website is. And a lot of my, and all my clients are, are Wix. Um, it's just a template based website, just like WordPress is a template template based word site program. Word, Work website program. Not <laughs> much. Uh, <laughs> Wake but, up now. <laughs> but I love it. I love it that WordPress. You know, you, you pick a template and it says the picture belongs here, but you want it down here. Nope, sorry, the picture is here. Um, Wix is click and drag, and it's so it's so great. I, you know, when you hire me to do a website, you're getting my design expertise and my content expertise, and then um, I teach my my clients how to um, update their website text, uh, you know, content and, and images and, and how to, how to, how to, you know, upload blogs. So it, it's very simple for them to maintain. And if they have a problem that you always call and I'm, I'm good with, you know, doing a quick, it'll take me two minutes. It would probably take them two hours because mm -hmm. I'm in it all the time, yeah. but you definitely have, um, you know, a, a one page, uh, website is all you'd need. You just need, um, a little bit about you, a contact us pay, you know, form so that, that people can reach out to you, put your, your phone number on there so they can reach you that way. If you have social media um, things, you should have your links there to your Facebook, your LinkedIn, whatever social media platforms that you're using for your business. Um, and then talk about your products or services. You can do that all in one page, very simple. Um, a call to action is essential for any website, whether it's a startup, website, you know, your, your one page or your, your 10 or 20 page website. Um, and a call to action is what do you want your visitors to do? Do you want them to make an appointment for a free consultation? Do you want them to sign up for your um, newsletter or download your ebook or download your white paper, something? This is a way for you to um, collect email addresses of people that are obviously interested in what you are offering. And that's a way you can start sending out newsletters um, to them or product announcements, whatever. You've got a, a database that you're building when you're doing this. So you just want one very clear call to action on your website. And what should it look like? So if they're new to this and they use <laughs> a free template builder, let's say they don't use Wix or WordPress or they use a free one. Mm -hmm. What should it look like? Well, I, I like to use a template to start with, but I don't ever want to use 
th that template as the final product. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know how much you've been out networking, but when we've been out, Mary and I, my business partner, um, there's this one uh, Vistaprint card that must be on the first page of Vistaprint business cards. And I think we collected five or six of that same card design mm -hmm. for six different businesses, right? Mm -hmm. And it just didn't look original. It looked, it almost looks tired, you know? Mm -hmm. So don't ever use the template that's out there. Um, make it your own. Um, it may take you a little while to figure out how to change the background or change the colors to be your colors. And that's another thing. You want to brand it um, to your company. Um, and branding is not just your logo. It's, it is part of it, but you want your logo. You want the colors you're using in your website and in your logo to all be the same. You don't want to have your logo be bright red and everything you're, you're handing out be red and then your website's blue with no red in it. Mm -hmm. You need to have that continuity, that branding. Um, your content um, should be the same on everything, whether it's, you know, and the, so the voice that you're using um, should be the same voice in your brochure. Um, your font should all always be the same too. Um, don't go using 20 different fonts. Pick one or two at the most on your website. Being creative and colorful doesn't work like that. It gets very confusing and the, the script fonts are horrible to read. Um, don't ever use yellow anything because yellow is very hard on the eyes for people to understand or read um, online. Okay, so if um, they do want more than one page because you were talking about one page, but if they want more than one page, what types of information should they include in different pages? Like for me, I know I have the about, the services, products. Right. So that's, yeah, that's it. So you've got your homepage, which is kind of like an overview about you. And you can put your, um, your services or products, maybe in a, a strip in the middle or someplace on there that will, you can link to, and that would also have a link from your, your navigation bar to those services or products. So yes, you definitely want to have an about you section because it's important for, um, you know, that no like trust of, mm -hmm. for people to, to get to know you before they're going to, and like you and trust you before they're going to take and spend money with you. So getting to know you, um, and it can be strictly business, or you could throw personal stuff in there if you wanted to, that you thought that maybe you could connect on a, on a personal level. And somebody is like, oh, she likes hiking just like I do, or she runs five, five Ks just like I do. So they, you have that in common, you know, those are sometimes some good things to put in there. Your mission statement could be on that, um, about section. Um, you could, definitely have you, you need information about your products and services and this is where people go for more detail social media is our quick little snippets and the idea of social media is to push everybody to your website for more information yep. so have it there have detail about what your products and services are you don't have to put pricing in there believe me um that's some 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 yeah, don't put any pricing i don't either because it yeah. changes it, it depends. Are you a not-for-profit? Well, my pricing is different if you're a not-for-profit, right? Exactly. Um, so you don't have to put pricing, but definitely put information about what your products and services are. What are they going to get from you? Um, testimonials are fabulous. Um, get some testimonials from your clients. I always tell our clients, ask for a testimonial that you can use in your marketing. Don't say you're going to use it on your website because that's the only place you can use it. Um, email them, ask them for it, and then keep that as proof that you have their, their okay to use it in your marketing. So you can use it on your website, in your social media, um, in a brochure, wherever you want to do, put information about, you know, put a testimonial. Those are very powerful. And you, you can, up to you, whether you want to put the person's uh, that's giving the testimonial, their, their entire name and business, or you can just put, you know, Dave at a computer company, you know, or you could put like my client, Dave at Lightspeed Computers, right? So I could put that in there or I could put Dave Meyer at Lightspeed, owner Light, Lightspeed Computers. So you could, depending on how comfortable you are with people poaching your customers, but if they're in love with you and they're giving you a testimonial, they're not leaving you probably. Yeah, exactly. Um, definitely want to contact us page. And what goes on that page is dependent on if you have a brick and mortar shop, like for, for you, Michelle, you and I, and even Sandy, who's on this call too, we work our businesses from our home. I don't want people showing up my, my door, neither do you, oh. you know? Um, so we just have a contact us page, but 
for like our client, Deborah Jean, um, uh, Deborah Smith, who owns Deb, uh, Deborah Jean and Company, she's got a shop over on Park Avenue. She wants a map mm -hmm. so people can get directions to her shop and her store hours. All that information, if you've got that kind of a, a business, should be on your about section. Um, if you've got a, um, a blog, Add that, you know, blogging is so critical nowadays. It helps get you found because the bots literally crawl around the web and they're looking for websites that have got new information. And they'll crawl by, you know, my blue lilac website and they'll go, oh, Lori put more stuff up. We'll just put her up in rankings and until you are on the first page. And that's where we are because at least twice a week, there is something in my blog post, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, We've been doing that for eight years. Shoot me, but whatever. <laughs> I, like, ah! but, I um, try to do once a week and I've been slipping, but every so often, I try to do once a week. How often should somebody blog? Um, you know what? It depends on your comfort level. If, if you pick a schedule, stick to it. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of clients that I blog for. I ghost blog for them once a month and that's all they need. You know, usually sometime the, the first Wednesday of the month, their blog goes up, uh, for example. And then I've got other clients that are twice a month. And that's fine for me because of what, like what you and I do, Michelle, I really feel that sharing that information is so critical mm -hmm. and um, I want to, you know, walk the walk, you know, and I, I talk the talk, I want to walk it too. Yep. So um, I keep a calendar of, you know, my, my social media calendar of what I'm posting on each day so that I know what I'm doing. Um, and I, unlike my clients who are, um, only on maybe one or two social media channels, maybe three if they've been doing their business for a long time. Um, I'm on everything, <laughs> probably like you, yeah. because somebody comes up and asks me about, well, you know, what's TikTok all about? Well, I can tell them because I've been on it. I don't like it, but I've been on it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Parlor, I'm on Parlor now. I don't know if you're on that, but that's an alternative to um, check it out. It's an alternative to Twitter. So, you know, you have to you have to do everything when you're the marketing person. So the blogging is important. Um, and then you're using your keywords correctly in a, in a, in a uh, um, way that makes sense when you're reading the blog that are help you get found in searches so that when um, somebody's looking for a topic, say websites, and my blogs will show up because I'm using the right keywords. And those are essential, the SEO in your, the back end of your website, as well as in the content in your website. So now you mentioned social media and I've had people come to me who don't have a website yet, but they want to get on social media. And I mm -hmm. always try to tell them it's great. I would love to help you and I will help you, but you should have a website first. Is that true in your eyes? Am yeah. I oh saying? My God. Okay. Exactly. Cause that's what I said. The, I, the purpose, the point of social media is yeah. you're not going to sell from that really, unless you're spending a fortune in ads, right? That's yep. how Facebook and everybody else is making their money. Unless you're making, unless you're spending a lot of money in ads, the point of social media is to push everybody to your website to learn more. Yeah. And then another one of my questions is we're always on these things. Yep. What now I, I'm not, I'm not sure. Are websites now built to be mobile friendly? And if they are, what should go above the fold so that they see your message right away? Yeah. Well, um, I always did mobile friendly websites when I was started out eight and a half years ago, creating a website, um, just because I'm always on my cell phone. And the worst thing was to have to keep pushing across to read the, t and then, then it, it, yeah, it just was horrible. And then maybe about, I think 2018, Google came and said, I don't care if, we don't care if you are the number one website in your, you know, you're listed in the, in the searches as number one, if you don't have a mobile website, you're not even going to be found basically. So mm -hmm. everybody had to scramble. Most of the template based websites have the ability to create a mobile friendly. It's not an automatic, you have to know where to go to mm. go in and then you have to take a look at the mobile friendly one and sometimes everything converts over beautifully my case 99 percent of the time it doesn't so you have to go in and move things around because pictures will be like all three pictures if you've got three pictures on a page and you want them by the content they're all in a row in the middle of everything so you have to you have to click and drag and move things around and you have to make make sure it's going to look good the uh when you're designing a website, it looks like your screen, like you'd see it on a, on a website, on a 
tablet or a computer screen. But when you're designing in the mobile the version, they give it to you like it would be looking at it on a phone. Mm -hmm. And so that's how you can move things around to scroll. So that's how you get things. It's not really above the fold. You can't get that much because it's such mm -hmm. a tiny screen, yeah. but you can get the important message information up there. Now you were talking about call to actions, CTAs. Um, you talked about what it is, but how do you feel about the pop-ups? Because I have mine as a pop-up, but I do have other call to actions on my website. What's your thoughts on pop-ups and making that your call to action? Um, sometimes, I, personally, I find them extremely annoying. But it, it's <laughs> Don't not go to my website now. It, it's not necessarily the, the call to action ones. It's the, can I help you? Can oh, yeah, no. I can help. I can see the customer service thing, you know, the conversation. I, I, I add those to a lot of my clients. Like I've got a client that's a, a carpet cleaning company. And they wanted to be able to, you know, instant chat with people. Um, I'm like, so I set that up. It's easy peasy, right? But it doesn't pop up. Um, one of my clients during the COVID um, thing, they wanted to let people know they were still open. So their website, I did a pop up. Hey, we're still open. And it was a sticky note that just came up, stayed for a few minutes and then went over to the side. So it wasn't um, like in your face, you couldn't still navigate or read what you were looking at. So it all depends on how the pop up is implemented. Um, yeah, if you've got a pop, what does your pop up say, Michelle? Oh God, just, I'm trying to get them to sign up for my ebook. And I do get okay. people sign up for it. Yep, well, then it's working, that's good. Yeah. Yep. Now, how do people get found in searches? What should they do to get found easier? And, and do you guarantee people to be on the first page? Oh, never, never. I never guarantee anything uh, like that. Oh, no. those I, are scams, people. <laughs> oh my God, yes. They yes. are definitely scams. Oh, I'll yes. get you there. It will take, once you, once you put a new website up or um, make serious changes to a website, like one of my clients is a chiropractor and he's in Chi Lai. And um, I have him on page one for chiropractors, you know, if you're looking, searching for chiropractors in Chi Lai and um, Gates. And he says, well, I now wanna be on page one in Henrietta and in, what was it, Sweden, I think, or whatever, so one of the towns up, up along there. And I said, okay, I'm gonna go in and I make some changes in your content of your page and in the back end." And I said, give it three months. And in three months he was, you know, on the first page for searches in those towns. Um, so you need to, there's a couple things you need to do. You need to make sure that there's a back end for the administrative part when you're building it. There's an admin part of the website for building the SEO, the search engine optimization. That's where you put your keywords. You wanna meta tag your images. You want to make sure that your content is written so that your keywords are in there and they're used and they flow naturally. Google will um, punish websites that just bullet point keywords. Mm. They will just, you know, you'll be on page 100 of a search. They, they will punish you for that because that's some people's way of trying to scam the system of getting around that, of using it the way it's meant to be. Um, and then again, by blogging and having constantly new and updating content on your website that helps raise your site in searches and um, using your keywords in your um, blogs. Now I know with WordPress and what's your platform that you use? Wix. Wix. Okay. Now I know with WordPress, there's plugins like Yoast, I think mm -hmm. is the SEO one. Does Wix have those as well? And are those plugins? Wix has an automatic um, SEO built right in. Okay. That works fabulously, but they have plugins too for different things. Like if you wanted to add Calendarly or if you've got a shopping cart or you want to add PayPal or any of those types of options to your site, they have a, a, an amazing amount of plugins. Some are free, some you pay for. Okay. And then how do you promote the website? Now you got this great looking website that you created. How do you get it out there? How do you teach your clients to do that? Or is that something you do for them? Um, part of it's teaching them and part of them is hopefully reading my blogs and learning, mm -hmm. but, um, writing blogs is a great way to promote your website because you're sharing those blogs, not just on your website. If you're listening to 
any smart social media person, or let me put this, let me rephrase it. If you're listening to a savvy social media, person, <laughs> <laughs> um, you you are um, putting your blog out on LinkedIn and and um, a link to it on Twitter, and you are posting it on Facebook. So you're sharing it all over the place and make, hopefully linking it back to your website, right? So that people, when they want to finish reading it, they go back to your website. Um, put a link on your email signature that mm -hmm. goes right to your website. Guest blog um, with other people, like Michelle has asked for people to guest blog on her site. So when I send my blog out to her, I'm gonna also put a little bit of information about me and a link to my website for anybody that wants to learn more about me and my business and what I do. So that's a great way to um, promote and yourself in front of a different audience, but also promote your website. Um, Make sure your website address is on your business card. I can't tell you the number of business cards I've gotten without website addresses. Oh yeah, I have a website and <laughs> where is it? It's yeah, how are people yeah. supposed to find you right, then? Exactly, it's got, and, and you know, so the website should be on your brochure, on your business card. Um, it, you know, just pop up updates. Like when you've just put something on your website or you've just built your website, share that. Hey, everybody on social media, I have a website, go check it out or we just redid our website. Now, if I did that, you guys would all get tired of hearing it because I play around and I'll, you know, I'll tell Mary, oh, by the way, go check it, look at our website. I just redid it this weekend because I, like, I had nothing else to do. Uh, <laughs> I get bored with what my website looks like and I just yeah. start all over again. And I love to do, I love to play like that. We did um, that with, I did that with one of my clients. She redid her whole website and we did a great social media right promotion and it drew more traffic to it for sure exactly exactly take a look at what we're doing what we you know what changes we've made or we've got a brand new website that's a great way to promote your business especially if you've got an older website like i have a client that just or a potential client i think they're going to sign on with me they sent me their website and they said we realize we need to update and their website was a very old um tired looking um mm -hmm. WordPress template and you know you could tell by looking at it that it's when the template was and it was like early 2000s and it's like mm -hmm. yeah we gotta gotta get you updated you know every two to th every three like I do when you yes. see a place like that <laughs> and I try you try and be nice to people about mm -hmm. that and you're going oh my god yeah. <laughs> Ah, you know, yeah. did your seven-year-old nephew do that for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, I know. I, I'll look at clients' websites and I'm like, oh God, that needs help. <laughs> exactly. And sometimes, you know, when you're starting out by yourself and you don't have the money to invest in somebody that's a professional to design a website, um, they do it themselves. And you can tell. I can tell, I'm sure you can too, because it just doesn't yeah. have that polished professional look. You know, if you wanna have a professional looking website, there's so much you need to do, but you need to make sure, you know, your content is, like I said, written with the keywords in mind and um, that it's grammatically correct and there are no spelling errors. Mm. I mean, I'm coming to you, you're a professional and you can't spell. Oh, am I gonna do business with you? Maybe not, probably not. You know, I, I need someone that knows the English language well enough to understand the difference between there, there, and there. You know, the content and word first, because it spells right. spell checks for you and then copy it over. Well, it spell checks, but it doesn't grammar check. I use Grammarly, mm, yes, which is I fabulous do. because it will tell you if, you know, this doesn't make sense because you need a comma here or yeah. You know, because I get typing so fast, I forget those commas. Yeah. And then I just throw everything, my all my blogs for myself and my clients into Grammarly before they go out. Um, just to know that I've got it. So I'm not going to be embarrassed. And even still, sometimes something will slip through. Because, you know, if you're looking at something and you know what it's supposed to say, you you don't always get it. I like to say I put things in my in my computer and let them cook. And I'll <laughs> go back and visit them. And then I'll go, oh, yeah, I meant to say your and it says our and it didn't catch that because it's yeah yeah so what are some tips to drive traffic besides social media what other ways can people drive traffic to their website well like i said blogging putting it in your um, email signature um guest blogging those are the, the most ideas i can think of in social media is huge yeah it's really huge for driving people to your website that's what it's there for and then how do you make your website look professional looking? Like I said, um, not too cluttered. Um, sometimes I, I did a, um, a presentation at the RPCN um, bootcamp on websites and it was not hard to find mm -hmm. examples of websites that looked horrendous. 
that used 20 different colors, you know, um, and lots of different fonts and had so much information crammed in to the homepage um, because everybody thought everything was important, obviously. Um, really think streamlined. People need white space for their eyes to rest. You need an image and some text, but some white space around it. The eyes need a place to rest. So don't try cramming everything into your homepage. Put an image with, you know, maybe if you've got three main services, put those three images up with whatever the services are. Like uh, for me, maybe websites, social media, and public relations. And then, you know, and then link them to a page where you can have more content. Bullet points are fabulous because people will look at those and go, oh, I can read that, as opposed to this jam packed paragraph full of text that people are going to go, no, I don't think so. You know, they just don't want to be bothered with that. Um, so keep it clean, keep it simple. Um, don't use too many colors, too many um, motions. Like if you've got, you can use video in the background of your website. Just be careful what kind of video you're using that it's not going to be distracting from the message that your content should be promoting. It can be kind of cool, the video, but it's got to be used the right way. Um, again, not too many fonts, one or two, pick them and stick to those through the entire font, uh, through the entire website. And the two different fonts might be one that you use for your top of the page that says like about us or whatever, and then another font for the content portion of the page. A um, couple simple little tricks, like if you're putting your, your headshot up uh, and you're looking this way, make sure that you're looking into the page, not off the page, because it, it, that's distracting for people. So you can always flip the picture around so it's looking in towards the page or move it to the other side if you don't know how to flip a picture. Mm. Um, little, little things like that, that um, you know, a professional would know to do Simply, easily. Um, get good photos that um, you take yourself of your products if you can and your services. If you can't um, and you don't want to spend the money on stock photos, there are plenty of royalty free websites that you can get. There was another question of mine. Should they okay. use stock photos or does your templates come with photo? What should you Sometimes the templates come with photos which are great, but you can't use them off of your website. So if you've got a photo that you like and you want to also use it in your brochure and it belongs to iStock and iStock is what's funneling into Wix, you have to go to iStock to buy it. Mm. You, can't, you can't snag it off the website because it's not really yours. You didn't purchase it. You're sort of renting it. Um, so I like to use my, own, my client's own pictures if I can. Um, if I can't, then I go and find the appropriate image or I create the image in like Canva or PicMonkey, right? Yeah, um, I like Canva. Yeah, one of those two are, are fabulous for being able to create um, images that I can use. I use that a lot for social media like you do. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, the royalty free sites, don't just go to Google and search free images because you're going to get images that aren't free. Um, they And a royalty free means that if if you, if you use them, you have permission to use them. Using non-royalty free images could get you into a lawsuit and cost you your business. And nobody needs that. Yeah, they say don't Google images because yeah, you can get right. sued. Yeah. yeah, precisely. Yeah. So how has COVID affected your business? If in a good way or a bad way? Or both. <laughs> well, yeah, kind of both. You know, it was kind of, it, we are very, Mary and I are really out there networking all the time. Yes, and you are. That's and, how we met. <laughs> and we belong to numerous organizations mm -hmm. and we're involved up to our eyeballs in these. And it's been kind of um, isolating, sad, you know, to not be out there seeing all my friends and everybody I, I just adore in person, right? And, right? and I'm a hugger too, right? So that's yeah. even tougher, right? I'm a hugger too. Yeah, I know. So that's why we get along. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, you know, during COVID, um, had a lot of my clients were really struggling. Um, uh, so my retail clients, you know, uh, like, for example, Deb, she wasn't able to be open. Um, Walmart was open, Target was open, but she couldn't be open, which was mm -hmm. stupid, but whatever. Um, but she was still 
doing, um, I, I was talking to her about, let's, you know, do some Facebook uh, live things. And she did, she did some hosting, some sip and shops and um, she'd show stuff and then she'd do curbside pickup. And um, we updated her website and, um, you know, so she, we helped her promote her business in different ways than what she had been doing previously, right? And the same with, you know, my chiropractor. Um, different types of posts, yes, we're open, we're in, in talking about the, the, the safety issues that they were, you know, had in place for people to be able to feel safe to come to visit, because their health is important, and getting your back taken care of um, can make all the difference in, your, in the world and your, in your life. Um, so that kept us busy. Um, but now, um, like we were saying earlier, before you started recording, it just exploded with everybody realizing that they have to market themselves differently, um, mm -hmm. that they need, and they need help doing that. So we've been extremely busy helping small businesses. And usually, you know, we always had a goal of like three to four new clients a month. And obviously that wasn't happening during COVID. I think I got one a month. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'll take that, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to none a month. Exactly. But these were people that had been, you know, one that I'd met networking maybe a year or so before. And another one that um, I'd met networking also, but he decided to pull the trigger on his business and say, okay, I'm taking that leap of faith and starting a business and, and, and moving forward. So, Yeah. Yeah, it has been crazy. I This gave me time to focus more on my business, which has been good. I do miss going out and networking and obviously finding clients that way, but people are finding me in a Google search. I had somebody call me a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I found you on the internet and she signed with me. So people are realizing now that, yeah, now is the time to either update their website, get on their social media. So if somebody is struggling and not sure if they should go free or not, obviously you want them to take the plunge and, and go see a professional, but what are some tips if they decide to do it on their own? Um, don't do the free because then it's got ads on it for whoever, you know, it, it, it just does. Mm -hmm. um, like the template base, like Wix or Square, uh, I think it's Squarespace is another one I've done. Um, they have free versions, but again, it's, it's going to be branded with mm. ads. So it doesn't, it takes away from your professionalism, quite honestly. Um, WordPress, you need to have somebody hosting it for you. So you have to, you know, you have to know how to do that. Um, so I would tell people to, you know, at least buy the, the least expensive version of the website that you can. So you don't have any advertising on it, except you, it's mm -hmm. all about you. Um, go get your domain name. Um, don't go to GoDaddy because they hold the domains hostage for uh, three months, 90 days from when you buy it before you can take it ex and export it someplace else. So oh, yeah. they want you to build your website with them. Mm. Simple as that. They want you to build it and have them host it. And um, so go to Google, look up Google domains and go through Google and uh and buy your domain that way oh i never knew google had a domain yep option. yep yeah everybody's got the same the same domains you know they're, yeah. they're all open available with whatever is open and available they will have so when it comes to domains how many should they purchase like for me i have savvy social media.net because dot com was already taken and then i have michelle arbori and i have i think one other one but what how should they pick their domain and if it's already taken, then how do you, you know what I mean? How do they maneuver that? Right. So if it's already taken, they should probably um, talk to an attorney because somebody else in their um, marketplace might have the same business name as them and they could find themselves being sued. Mm -hmm. Like one of my clients had that issue where they got a letter saying, you have to have everything down in six months. And so I had them go to see an attorney that, uh, I, I don't know if you, you, yeah, you know, Tracy Jung. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, she negotiated. So they had a year, this company had a year in which to rebrand themselves. So we helped them do that. Um, but they were, they, had, they were using a business name that was very close to this other company that were in the same market. Now, if, if, if they were um, like, here I am blue lilac marketing. If it was, I've got the word marketing in my business, but if, uh, if I was blue lilac 
and that was my business name. And there was another company called Blue Lilac, but they were a restaurant. There is no competition mm-hmm. because we're not in the same market. But if the other Blue Lilac was also in advertising or marketing or anything like similar to what I do, and they were there first, they could sue me. But obviously I don't have that issue because I've got the word marketing in my name and I am an LLC, which means I've done that research and, 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 and become a, a, a corporation. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure that your domain isn't already taken. <laughs> and if it is, does somebody else in the same market as you have, have that name? And if they do, then you need to maybe re- revisit your business name. Um, but some people, sometimes using a domain that has, that isn't the same as your business, like um, Best Pizza in Rochester, right? That could be your domain name for your pizza shop, and uh, that. But there be, your, but your pizza's company's name is your business's name is Joe's Pizza. Um, but you could also have Joe's Pizza, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I bet you there's 20 million Joe's Pizzas. So, you know, you have to get a little creative. Yeah, I have bluelilacmarketing.com, dot biz, um, blue lilac mark, blue lilac marketing group, dot com, dot biz. I also have. Rochester dot marketing. Um, that one I pay a lot of money for. I have never used it, but I got it. <laughs> I didn't know there was a dart dot marketing. Yes, there is a dot marketing now. Huh. Um, but so take a look at what other things are available and, um, you know, have one be your website. And if you are doing a special campaign for something, um, like I've got an, a client that um, we just added the word now because we want people to take action now. So it would be like savvy social media now, mm-hmm. um, dot com, And we use that as a landing page and that only points to that landing page, which is a part of their website that is on, you can't find it through the navigation bar, but the only people can get there through that link that, you know, that, that they, and you know that they got there because they, they use that postcard or that email uh, mailing that you did. And that tracks that campaign for you. So, you know, gee, nobody just stumbled upon this. They got there because of what I did, because of the email or because of the postcard, because of the letter or because of whatever it is that you were doing to push them to this special offer for your ebook or your white paper or whatever it is. You know, you can use those um, that way in your websites. How important are Google Analytics? Oh, extremely important. That gives you an idea of where people are coming from and where they're staying on your website. what they're finding of interest, you know, that'll tell you, I, I love to see that people are going to my blog and mm-hmm. spending, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes. It means they're reading more than one, right? Yeah. Um, so they're there and they're, they're reading my blogs. Uh, I, I'm always amazed. So I go to a meeting with a client and they'll go, Oh my God, I just love your blogs. And I'm like, I, I didn't know you read them because they, they, you know, they kind of ghost you. They don't comment. They don't like anything. They just, they, but they read them. Yeah. Um, But the analytics will tell you, um, just like on social media, analytics will tell you when they visit. So if most of your traffic to your website is at eight o'clock on Tuesday morning and you're not posting your blog till 10 o'clock, you may think that maybe you ought to be posting at 10 o'clock on Monday morning. So it gives you that that idea, the, 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 the data that you need to be able to, um, to pivot to, um, to manage your website much better. Is that some or is that easy to set up? I know my web guy did it for me, but is oh, yeah, that it's easy free. to set yep. up? It, it, yep, it's very easy to set up. You just Google 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 Analytics, <laughs> and they walk you right through it for your website, and it's free, and it's and it's awesome. Perfect. Yep. So, what is one lasting tip before we open it up for questions? If Sandy has any, or Sandra, um, what is one lasting tip that people can walk away with, and how can people get in touch with you? Okay. Uh, One tip would be definitely have a website if you have a business um, because it um, validates your business. It it tells people that you are, um, you're not a fly by night. You are serious about what you do and you're a professional. Um, You can get a hold of me, Lori, L-A-U-R-I-E at bluelilacmarketing.com or you can visit my website, bluelilacmarketing.com. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I don't know if Sandra has any questions, if you want to pop on. Yeah, I, uh, I don't really have any questions because I know Lori I know. pretty well, and I've heard 
various presentations of hers before, but yeah. um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, um, I might be getting in touch with you because I certainly need some help. <laughs> So, well, perfect. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> God knows even some of the stuff you try to keep track of that you think you've got going. Yeah. Goes to hell in a handbasket. So, <laughs> so that's been going on, but we'll see. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you for joining us, Sandra. And if yeah. you guys have any questions, make sure to comment uh, below the Facebook Live and Lori and I will make sure to monitor that and answer Definitely. any questions you have. So thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you and for inviting me. Thanks yeah. for Sandy, Sandy for coming. Um, yeah. And I hope other people are watching on Facebook. And um, like I said, yeah, we'll answer any questions. Definitely. Yes. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.